Uh, I'm going to give it just a little bit of time uh, for some more people to flood on in, and then I'll get started with my long spiel about a lot of resume things. Okay, okay. I think I'm going to get started right now, if that's okay. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you all for showing up. I really appreciate it. Apologies if I am uh, dead tired at some points in this. I have gotten absolutely terrible sleep the past few days. Uh, I hope it does not come across. I am very excited to talk about this. Uh, to refresh everyone's memory, I am Joshua Waters. I am a non-binary voice actor based out of Ohio. I've been working for about a little over five years professionally. Uh, you might know me from uh, mainly crunchy role things like Sasaki and Miyano, Prince of Tennis. Uh, I've been in Attack on Titan, some Tribe 9, Show by Rock. Uh, and I was recently in the uh, Golden Globe nominated uh, Inuo movie as Inuo. I'm very excited about that. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking to you about resumes. Uh, resumes are honestly a very important tool in the voice actor's tool belt that I feel is honestly very underutilized. Uh, resumes are seen as sort of just this comprehensive list of like, this is the stuff I've been in, a, an itemized list of project, 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 and nothing else. When in reality, it can be used for so much more. It can be used to show who you personally are to whoever this is being sent out to. It's, it's a very important tool moving forward. And I'll go over just some of the stuff with this first question. Uh, why should we even have a resume in the first place? So first, like I said, it's a comprehensive list of what you've done. It's nice to look back and see... Here's the things I've been in. Here is the stuff that I've been a part of. And remind people, these are some of the more notable roles that I've been in. It's, it's nice to send this off to people who might not know who you are and then see something and be like, oh, they're in this. They're in that. Uh, but it's not just, like said before, a list of these things. It's a list of people that you've worked alongside. It's a list of people that you've acted alongside the directors, the studios, and these people can be used for important references going forward. The directors, I know for certain, are people that you have worked alongside and have taken note of how you are as a voice actor, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses might be. And that gets shared around. If you have, say, you have been in a Crunchyroll project on your resume, uh, and you've worked under a certain director for a certain project, they keep track of what you're good at and what you've done better than some other people. If you have any special skills, these things are either kept in some kind of mental lock for these people, or they're written down in a very long list of things that you can reference later, like, this person may need some extra time on long scenes for lip flaps, or this person can bring a lot of very good energy. Use them in these types of roles. And if you have these places on your resume, they can be looked at and referenced by other people who might want to cast you. They might contact this other person and be like, hey, how's this person? I'm thinking of uh, putting them on the short list for this role. And... You can get a lot of great information like that. Uh, another thing uh, for why to even have a resume is it's not just a list of these roles. It's a list of your talents uh, outside of just specifically, I am good at character acting. I'm good at just acting in general. It lets you specify, I am really good at ADR. 
I'm really good at voice matching these specific celebrities that might get used a lot and you might not be able to get at a certain point. I am really good at uh, this one, which is a very like prominent one that I hear in pretty much any class that I'm a part of, improv. Um, the training or classes or even like an improv troupe is one of the most important things that you could probably include. It's not necessary by any means at all. But it's something that is constantly looked for because it shows that you don't just take the script into the words. You take the script and you can think beyond what is down there on the page. And it's very helpful for people moving forward if they have anything that you want to ad-lib, if they have anything that you might want to add to a script. If you have anything that you want to read in a different way than people normally would, it's very, very uh, important that way. Oh, um, as for questions, uh, I see someone wrote something down in the server events chat. I'm going to do a Q&A at the very end. I will answer this question. Do not worry. Uh, I would like to move on from why having a resume is important and go into specific... Oh, repeat that? On the uh, previous point on improv? Yes. Uh, improv is something that's seen as, like, people are actively going to be looking for that in your resume. It's... A very nice thing to have. It is by no means uh, needed, but it is an incredibly nice thing to show that you can do something special with a line or add something that would otherwise not be added because you're able to think outside of that box. And that's what improv mainly focuses on. So if you have any training in that or any uh, like improv troupe training that you've done before. It's very helpful in that regard. Um, but moving on from that, uh, going into what goes into a resume, uh, specifically for voice actors and how it differs from a job that is a little more corporate, uh, I'd like to include a link to a um, reference template I would like to know if that went through, because Dinobot said it wasn't allowed. I think we're good. Cool. Lovely. Uh, this is a very good template to look at uh, if you're going to see the basic gist of what a voice acting resume is. Um, it's the uh, VAC article that is show that shows up in the resources for... Yeah, that was Big Chungus Incorporated. I did not write this. I would like to let you know. Uh, but it is very nice. Uh, it is the VAC uh, template that they've used for uh, creating your own resume. Uh, and I'm just going to go down things in order of you seeing them. Uh, main thing, uh, first thing that you're going to see in a resume is the name. Uh, you might not think terribly much of this, but... In your voice acting, you are selling yourself as the product, pretty much. And when you're selling yourself as the product, you want your name to be very big on this page. People are going to remember your name if it's the biggest text on that page. If you scroll down, it is in the biggest font size by far. It is bolded. It's at the top. It's centered. Uh, and it's very important to include. If your name is hidden off in the corner somewhere or not big enough to notice, you're not going to see it. You're not going to remember this person who sends you the resume. Thinking about it in terms of the casting director or agency or uh, casting pool that might be getting this. Um, next thing that you're going to see is the contact information. Uh, this is where you can include your website. This is where you can include whatever email that you might be using. Uh, these two things need to also be very front and center, because if you don't have your contact info uh, very front and center in this person's face when you send these things off to people, then they won't be able to reach out to you. They won't, unless you've emailed this resume to them already, they're not going to have email access to you. They're not going to be able to see any of your other work. 
So being sure that is front and center, they're able to contact you and you can even hyperlink it. So it automatically sends you to a, um, does it have to be all in one page? I, I will, uh, I will be getting to that in just a second in the, uh, composure of the resume. Um, in this contact info, you can include it as just a hyperlink, uh, where it sends you directly to a send to this person. Uh, and it automatically throws, out, throws open the email, and you can write from there. Uh, next thing that you're going to have is the actual experience, the projects that you've been in. Uh, these are normally separated when you're in a resume by the different mediums that they're a part of, the big headers that you're seeing with animation, video games, commercial, narration. And for more character-centric things, you're going to have on the left side the project name. The middle section is going to be the role that you played in the project. So Unseasoned Chicken Karen is the name of the character. And on the right is speak to the manager LLC. So that is the client or the director that you worked through. Uh, this is, like I said before, how people are going to figure out what you've been in, how to contact the people that you've worked with, and if you've worked with any other actors in this that I might know of. Uh, say uh, somebody played John in Unseasoned Chicken from speak to the manager LLC. And I want to see if you did a good job by asking John. Is this person any good? I send them a message. And very easy to go forward with that. Uh, for things like commercials, however, um, and narration, they are less character-centric uh, when you include them. Say you played a character in a McDonald's commercial in like 2018 or something, and it's like, I'm loving it, number 49. Uh, and you said the ba da ba ba ba. I'm loving it for that one commercial. And you have your character name. It was John or something. And you have the project name. And you have McDonald's. You're no one's going to be able to find that specific commercial from 2008, some 2018, very easily. It's not going to be easy to look up who did that commercial. So in this, you just say clients include McDonald's. That's it. No project name, no character name, just the client that you did for that commercial. Say it's McDonald's. So McDonald's, comma, Indeed, comma, uh, Duolingo or something. And you would include those clients, and they're just the big names that you've worked with. You don't have to say specifically what you've worked on. You just say, these are the things. Uh, and for narration, uh, since there's not really a character you're playing in this either, it's going to just be the name of the thing you narrated and who made it. Uh, if it's a YouTube documentary, you can put the parentheses YouTube documentary. If it's by somebody, if it's like an audiobook, say the name of the thing, the name of the book, and the name of the person who wrote the book. Easy as that. Uh, other things that you can include are the training. The training is a very big part of this that people are going to be looking at, not just for uh, if you've gotten training, but who you've gotten training through. Uh, I do have a point about if you've not worked on anything just yet. Um, it will be, uh, if you haven't worked on anything just yet, uh, then making a full resume is probably not going to be something that happens in the immediate future. Uh, just being able to take into account things that you've done in real life as well might be an important way of putting things onto your resume. Things like uh, any play productions that you've done, any uh, audio books that you've been a part of, any audio dramas that you've done, literally anything in real life like radio, if you've done anything, if you've done any improv, that all can be included onto a resume. Uh, both. You can include both online and real life things into a resume like this. Um, but there are some things that I would suggest not to include. Uh, specifically, uh, like a big personal bio, uh, because you're going to be taking up the small amount of space that you're going to have. Uh, and to answer the question from earlier about how many pages would be required, 
Um, I'd say keep it from one to two pages. Uh, you're not going to want to overload these people with a bunch of text all at the same time. So a bio about yourself would more be suited for either your socials or on your website or something that has a lot more space. Uh, for uh, projects and productions you created yourselves, um, that's a good question. I, I feel like you can include these, uh, but um, if they are anything like a fan project about something, it gets into a bit of a legal gray area uh, where you're saying that I'm the voice of X character from X property when that character already has a voice or it has a voice actor. Uh, it gets into a bit of a gray area saying that I am claiming myself as the voice of this person or fan projects as a whole sometimes aren't seen sadly very well in casting director's eyes, especially people who didn't come up from that. A lot of people nowadays have come up from uh, fan work and fan projects and fan dubbing. Uh, but a lot of the people who are um, older and in the more veteran side of the industry look down on it a lot. So being safe to not include a bunch of fan work on there is probably for the best moving forward. Uh, and also having any like personal information. This is something that is included on... Uh, I, I think that unless they are fan projects, I feel like it is okay to include them. Uh, things like your personal information, however, are very much not. Uh, this is something that's included a lot in like corporate jobs, so they can get back to you. But this is going to be posted very publicly on somewhere like your website or somewhere like your socials. Like, I've got my resume. Click here to download it, and they'll have access to that. Uh, something like your phone number or your address, which would normally be included on something like a corporate resume, needs to be not here. Because <laughs> something like a corporate resume is not going to be publicly accessible. You are sending these privately to people. But you're wanting your voice acting resume to be in a very easy-to-find place. And if people can just click onto your resume and find your phone number or find your address, they're, it, it's spam call city, it's spam text city, it's easy to... It's, you don't want to dox yourself <laughs> online. Uh, very not a great idea. Um, like I said before, if you have exclusively fan projects or you're having trouble figuring out projects that you can include in your experience, um, think about things that you've lent your voice to or talents to outside of voiceover that might be useful to a casting director or someone that you'd be sending this off to, like uh, improv groups, stage performances like plays or musicals that you've done through school, any local school or radio that you might have helped with, just something that shows what you're able to do. And as you start to get more things, you can build up from there and slowly add and replace and move things around to fit where you are at that time in your acting. Um, I, I do want to add for the training uh, some good recommendations for uh, both online websites for classes, as well as specific people I would highly recommend and are pretty sought after and looked for in these resumes. Um, for the websites, I will pop all of these into the chat. Bop, bop, bop. Uh, Actress Connection, Ace Studios. Uh, Actress Connection is very good for marketing yourself towards uh, different agents. They have a lot of different agent uh, meeting nights. Uh, Ace Studios is a place where you can get very cheap, uh, easy to get classes. The class size is a bit bigger. Uh, so keeping that in mind that maybe on some of the more popular ones, there'd be up to about 60 people in a class at one time. Uh, acting in voice studios, you can have some specific directors that show up there from time to time. I know that the director of one of the recent Digimon anime uh, did some stuff through acting in voice studios uh, and brought some people on through there. I, I, I want to say not guaranteeing anything there, but I know that they did 
do classes through that at some point in the past year, I believe. Uh, Meet the VO Pros and Voice Actor Network. Uh, both of these are more catered towards people who are already professionally working. Uh, Voice Actors Network specifically requires you to send off your demo and your resume, which might be a little good to have for this little talk I'm doing. Uh, and honestly, I was able to get into the Voice Actors Network uh, little pool of classes that they can do uh, before I did any of the anime that I'm in, before I did any of the things that I'm in right now, uh, mainly doing it on visual novels and indie projects that I've been casting up until that point. It's me sending off my one demo that I had at that point and the small resume that I had and I was able to be in. So it's, it's not a terribly giant bar to pass. You don't need to be cast in the next Netflix series to get into this. Uh, and it's a very good resource to use. Uh, they, the classes for a lot of these sell out very quickly. So signing up to a lot of their um, newsletters is very helpful in getting like, oh, the classes are about to go up. Here's where you got to do it. Uh, also, some specific people that I would recommend over probably most other coaches uh, that I've heard very good word about through other casting directors, through other actors, and I've taken myself, uh, these three people, David Sobolov, who voiced Volibear in League of Legends. Uh, he is incredible. He does his own little courses every now and again uh, that are around two hours or so. Uh, he has a giant list of copy that you're able to get, uh, and he is very, very well versed in character acting. Um, Richard Horvitz, uh, he, voice of Zim, voice of Billy, uh, very, very, very good character acting teacher. Uh, he has a weekend course that I could not recommend more. It sells out also very quickly. Um, so just getting on to the newsletter for that and keeping up to date with that. Uh, he is some of the best character acting coaching that I've ever gotten. Uh, and Mick Wingert, who's the voice of Heimerdinger in uh, Arcane. Uh, and um, he's the voice of Poe in a lot of the TV shows for Kung Fu Panda. He also does play Moxie in Hell of a Boss. Yes, Richard does. Uh, I could not recommend any of them more. Uh, Mick Wingert and Richard do, uh, all of these people do one-on-one -on -one courses as well. Richard is amazing. I love him. He, his class is probably one of my favorites that I've ever taken uh, in my voice acting career. Just, yes, yes. Uh, he, he makes the learning experience of the class for a full weekend uh, so, so fun. Uh, yeah, all of these people do have a class. Uh, I might afterwards uh, get the links to their specific classes and link them all in the chat once it's over, uh, and it'll work out perfectly. Um, one more thing about resume, uh, specific resumes and everything. Uh, no, all of these classes are online. All the ones that I have taken have been online. Um, I, one more thing about the formatting for this is that I would recommend exporting this as a PDF. Uh, people don't want to have to open up a um, separate software or anything while they're looking through so many different types of resumes from so many different people. Uh, agencies and stuff look through hundreds, if not more, resumes per month, and making them need to open up a completely separate thing is, it's, it's a lot more than you would expect. Um, <laughs> lovely. I'm glad that you're uh, liking the information. Um, I, one more thing uh, on resumes that doesn't get talked about enough that I believe is a very important part of your marketing would be the personal flair that you can add to a resume. You don't have to keep it all uh, business and corporate throughout your entire resume. If you have yourself as the product that you're selling, having your own flair to the text, having your own little things that you add into things, like 
the text might be pink or you have a logo or you have a border. Uh, for an example, um, Kira Buckland's resume is just full on just her through and through, through and through. Uh, she has this fully pink. She has a custom little logo for her. Uh, and imagining this as her uh, with just full-on black and white corporate everything, uh, it just would not stand out as much. No, this is, this is just uh, on your resume. It doesn't even have to just be your website. Uh, I, I would recommend Canva as well. Um, Canva has a lot of great borders and spaces for headshots and uh, free things that you can add in. Uh, Canva Pro is, uh, is a paid thing, but Canva just straight up does not cost anything. Uh, highly recommend that for formatting these things. It is very, very helpful. Um, for auditioning with your new resume after you've, uh, after you've done everything else, um, it's going to be through those same usual hoops that you've heard before. Uh, places like Twitter for more public calls are always happening. Uh, looking at those tags like hashtag voice actor and cold calling like uh, indie games that might be looking for people. Uh, also, I would like to pop this into the chat. Um, I have the, uh, oof, this is not the right thing. Uh, I will look for it, but it is Sam Slade's, um, voice actor, uh, like, master document. Uh, it is a huge list of places that you can send that is publicly available uh, and send off your demos, your resume, anything that you've worked on. Uh, I will get that sent into the chat by the end of this. I'll just be sure to look through it. Um, Twitter auditions usually just have an email or something similar that you can contact uh, and or you have like a casting document. Uh, the main thing that I want to do is having a resume is not going to start immediately. Yes, that is it. Thank you so much. Uh, this is a very, very great resource for sending off your materials and your resume and your demos to very different places throughout. Uh, it has a bunch of different character places you can send it off to, a bunch of commercials, a bunch of narration, uh, audiobooks, anything under the sun that you'd want to send off a resume or a demo to is right here. Uh, highly recommend once getting a demo and materials all set, set up, sending off to as many as you can uh, that pique your interest at least. Um, I do want to state that having a resume publicly available and having it fully able to be seen isn't going to immediately make you have auditions thrown at you. You're not going to instantly start getting work back from it, but it is a very big step in the professionalism that is sort of expected once you get a bit higher up into voice acting. It adds that layer of like, I care about my work enough to show you what I've been in, to show you who I've worked with, to show you who I've trained under, et cetera, et cetera. It is a very, like I said, important tool to include in the voice actor's tool belt. And I hope that at this point, after I've ranted about it for a good while, uh, it makes sense as to why this isn't just a list of things that you've been in, but it's References. It is places that you've trained. It's uh, it's you into one little page. Um, I would like to open the floor to a few questions at this point. Uh, if anybody has anything that they want to ask, I'm going to scroll back up because I know we got some while I was talking that I would want to um, uh, answer while we go through. Uh, Charles said something when we started uh, about what platform I recommended for resumes. 
Um, like I said before, Canva is a very good resource. Um, something like a YouTube playlist would be good for specifically YouTube content, but it's not going to show everything that you've worked on. And that wouldn't be more of a resume. It'd be more of like a reel of like, this is all the stuff I've worked on. Here's links to all of the things. Uh, Google Doc, Canva, Word, and your own website would probably be the best ways to create these things. Canva would probably be my favorite out of those because making your own website is a big undertaking for itself. You have to get the formatting. You have to get the rights to a uh, link for a website. Uh, and for Google Doc and Word, they're good and can make a very standard uh, resume, but Canva has so much extra flair options that you can add. Uh, free to use uh, shapes and designs that you can use to make it pop a little more than it normally would. And Google Docs and Word are a lot more astringent with that. Uh, I saw a lot of people talking. Wix is a very common place to make a website. That's where I was able to get mine through. Uh, Wix Pro. Uh, it, you can get your own uh, links to things through there. Um, when auditions for director slash producer roles on Casting Call Club, what do you recommend we send as an audition? Uh, for a director or a producer role, that'd mainly be um, you saying past things that you'd worked on. Uh, that would be a resume type thing. Uh, just saying uh, on some kind of document, this is things that I've directed in the past. This is the training I've had in directing. Uh, if you need directors, this would be what I can bring to the table. Uh, how, mu what is how much money do VAs and VOs make? That is a very broad question, but uh, I, I don't know if I'd be able to answer that. To answer, well, we make money? Who told you that? Very true. Uh, what do you think is the best way to promote and improve yourself as a voice actor? You don't have a lot of money and still younger compared to colleagues. Would really like some advice. Uh, Honestly, the best way to promote and improve yourself as a voice actor, in my opinion, is uh, networking. Finding people who share the same um, interests as you, not specifically voice acting, but finding people who share those same interests and you can just chat with, play games with. Honestly, I've met some of my biggest voice acting friends through just playing like Phasmophobia and Overwatch with them. Uh, through different Discord servers, honestly. Um, I, I've met people that I never thought that I would just because they were looking for people to play games with. Um, to improve yourself as a voice actor, it's just practice. I can't give any other advice other than just practicing as much as possible. Warming up, practicing, and finding places where you can do things that are out of your comfort zone. Uh, that's why I recommended those classes, but I understand money is, like, an issue for classes, because some of those things are expensive. Some of those classes can be upwards to, like, $500 at some points. And being able to find groups like this, honestly, and groups like the ones on VAC, uh, finding places that you can practice voices or practice your monologuing or practice your ADR. Like, I see this place does ADR, uh, workshops and practicing every now and again, that's very, very helpful. And getting that practice in before getting into the actual setting of like, I'm in here and I'm doing ADR in studio is going to be incredibly, incredibly helpful going forward. Uh, but yeah, main thing that I would say going forward is just, just network as much as you can. Find these friends and be personable to them. Uh, should you update your resume whenever you get a role? If you get a role that you feel like needs to be put on there and people need to know about, say you get a role in something that people 
you believe should probably know about. Some new indie animated project that would fill out your resume very nicely. Some new visual novel that you're really proud of your work in that you want people to hear. Something that you feel proud of. It doesn't have to be the biggest thing in the world. It could just be something that you feel proud of. Something you want people to see. And that's when you should probably add something to your resume. I'm a bit guilty, honestly, of waiting too long to update my resume. Uh, my resume uh, currently doesn't have a few of the roles that I've, I've been in, and I feel like I should probably fix that. But it's, it's something that you can go back to whenever you'd want. It doesn't need to be daily. It doesn't need to be every single role that you get. But things that you want people to see. Things that if I threw at a casting director or an agency, they would look at and be like, that's good work. I, I really enjoy this. Uh, when you first began voice acting, how long did it take you to get your first role? Um, when I first began voice acting in, um, goodness, I think it was 2017, 2018? I took a few months before I got literally anything. Uh, I, I started off work in, honest to goodness, uh, fan, fan games of different games that I was playing. Uh, I know I'm going to get flamed in the chat for this, but I was in Danganronpa fan games. <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was, honest to goodness, good practice due to uh, how many characters were in every one of them. Uh, I know it gets a really bad rap nowadays. Yeah, honestly. Uh, but it gets a really bad rap nowadays, and I completely understand why. Uh, but there's so many characters that go into those things, and I would try my best to audition for any character that I possibly could to just get out of that comfort zone, flex whatever vocal talent I was working on at that time, do something that I wasn't normally trying to do something i wasn't normally cast for uh and that i feel like helped me so much when i was just starting out uh knowing that sounding stupid sounding silly making an audition where you try your best is going to sound so much better if you let yourself be silly and let yourself be a little goofy while you're doing things than any audition would be if it's just technically very good I, I say all the words, dictionary definition, perfect. It's, it's a lot better if you just let yourself flow with it. Um, any tips for VAing while in a university? Oh, my Lord. I have... You, you've asked the best person for the job on this one, because I am still in university. Um, I actually recorded all of the anime that I've done in my university dorm room. Uh, I was lucky enough to not have a roommate, but I did have ways to work around that if I did. Uh, I had a PVC booth that I had built myself uh, using things from uh, vocalboothtogo.com. They have very good soundproofing blankets that you can throw over PVC. Uh, and I made myself sort of a uh, makeshift vocal booth where I recorded all of Sasaki and Miyano, I recorded uh, all of my death battle things, uh, I recorded all of my Tribe 9, I didn't record Inuo, uh, I recorded Inuo where I am now, which is an apartment building. Uh, it, it is, it's very difficult to find a place in student housing to record, uh, but if you find a place where you can set up any kind of soundproofing booth, and then let people around you know, hey, I'm going to be a little loud and work around them. I, I had to go up to some of my neighbors, and at one point I even got a note slid under my door. Uh, but going over to people that live near you and just being like, hey, I, this is something I'm doing. It is something that I'm pursuing actively and I'm hoping to do in the future. If you understand this, I'm going to be a little bit loud. I hope that's okay. If it's not, uh, is there any time that would be better for me to start voice acting or be a little louder than normal? Uh, also, for uh, Vexed saying there's a lot of good warm-up vids on YouTube, uh, Jacob's Vocal Academy, easy, easy, the best uh, vocal warm-ups that I've seen. 
Um, let me scroll. Let me scroll. Oh my, I'm scrolling down it and I'm just, I'm just seeing everyone roasting me for being in Tanger up a fan projects. Um, normal blankets and pillows as walls for a sound booth. Will that also help sound quality? We can get professional or proper equipment. Yes. Uh, anything is better than nothing. Currently I am in a terrible, terrible space for recording because I'm at my, um, just regular laptop and not my recording space. Um, but Hanging up any kind of blankets to deaden the noise, any kind of anything that will help with sound quality, blankets, pillows, moving blankets, literally anything to dampen it will be better than just hitting against a hard wall or being in a very echoey room. Uh, A good place to get, like I said before, um, more professional, not terribly expensive, uh, equipment is, uh, like I said, vocalboothtogo.com. Uh, you can also get stuff like that off Amazon, uh, looking at moving blankets or uh, like deadening blankets, something that will take in all of the noise and stop it where it is. Uh, very helpful. Uh, first step <laughs> to VAing is to get past the cringe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's incredibly true. I. I, I feel like that's that's where you start to get a lot better as an actor. After you stop taking yourself terribly seriously and let yourself send off an audition where you do a, a little gremlin voice, where you do where you're a little gremlin, who you're a little guy. That's that honest to goodness. Like getting past I need to be cool, I need to be professional when I'm doing an audition. Auditions and acting is the fun part. That's where you're going to go and play. That's not where you're going to go to act like a serious guy. You're going to go there and have a good time pretending to be some character. If that character's serious, then you're going to be serious. If that character is a little bit higher pitched, a little bit goofier, then play with it. Um, yeah. Do you have any... I'm graduating from an acting course and don't know where I'm going... Here in Brazil, it's complicated to have a career as a voice actor. I am I am not knowledgeable enough on the um on the acting scene in Brazil to give you specific tips, but I can say that I know of a lot of different voice actors that are working from uh different countries, that are working from the United Kingdom, from China, from other places entirely. <laughs> Thanks for the reverb. Uh, people working from entirely different countries in uh, American projects right now. I know of a person who just recently got signed to my agency, CESD, um, from China because they went through uh, an LLC. They did a bunch of work in their current location. It's the voice for uh, the main character of No Straight Roads. Uh, they're incredible. Uh, Su Ling Chan. Love her. She's great. Um, I, I wish I could give more advice on where to go specifically, uh, but I can tell you that it's not impossible to get work in the USA from a different country. <laughs> I, I was at the Anime Ohio panel, and I didn't, uh, I didn't know that I was, I was going to get invited on. Uh, I, I had had my my boyfriend with me at the time and he knew and told me that I was going to get, uh, that Kellen had saved me a seat in the front row. Uh, and he just called me up by, (laughs) by, uh, sheer nothing. Like he just told me like, Hey, do you want to do your first panel? And it was the coolest thing ever. Um, tips on making sure you don't hurt your voice. Experimenting on voices scares me because I'm scared of causing vocal damage. That is a very honestly, Good question, because uh, if you're wanting to do a bit more experimental voices, something that's a little more gravelly, um, learning about vocal fry and where to position stuff like that in your throat to make sure that it is not doing damage to your chords. There's a lot of things done by metal singers, believe it or not, on YouTube, uh, as well as... um, Uh, a lot of different classes that specifically go into things like creature voices that talk about where to position voices 
uh, in your throat to make sure that you're not hurting it. Um, main tip on that, staying hydrated, drinking water, making sure you're not rubbing your dry vocal cords next to each other, doing a really gravelly low voice. It's, it's recommended to just stay as hydrated as possible moving forward with doing something like that. Um, as a starter, what types of projects should I be looking out for? Um, when you get into uh, voice acting just in general, um, don't be uh, terribly hard pressed to get into the, the biggest projects of all time because I stayed, I was trying for years and years to uh, get on audition pools and get on to uh, different casting rosters. And it's, if you just let yourself have fun, people will notice. And a lot of the projects on VAC, a lot of the projects on Twitter, a lot of the projects on Casting Call Club are just really fun. Uh, a lot of places that you can get really good paid projects are both here and on the VAC Discord with the casting call clubs, with the, the casting call paid and unpaid sections that they both have. Um, very easy to see new things posted in there pretty much every single day. Uh, so going for as much as you can and having as much fun is what I usually say for that. Um, Uh, you can make a resume if you're 13, yes. Uh, to VA while singing? Uh, are you talking about... Uh, if you're talking about um, character singing, um, finding a way that you're more comfortable in your voice uh, is the first step. Uh, if you find a voice that's like really gravelly, really low, really hard to stay in, not going to be much of a chance you're going to be able to do anything like singing in that. But a voice that's closer to your normal voice, a voice that you're comfortable staying in for a long period of time, uh, keeping the same things uh, in your throat, keeping the same nasal, keeping the same everything, and trying to do some smaller notes, uh, just do re mis with a character voice, and eventually you'll start to move into it. Uh, Mayday is the best. Uh, equipment that I recommend for starting out? Um, huh. Um, for equipment, I'd say something along the lines of Audio Technica is a very good brand to start off with for a microphone. They have the AT2020, that's a good USB microphone, and they also have an XLR version. Uh, you can get the. Uh, I, I'm sure that this has been tossed around literally everywhere, uh, but the Scarlet Solo is a good interface to start off with. The Complete 6 is also a nice one. Um, the Cloud Lifter is a nice one. Uh, a lot of things like that uh, are very good to start on. Uh, Audio Technica is just a very good brand in general. Um, if you go with the USB microphone, you can plug that directly into your computer. Uh, but if you go with the XLR, it's higher quality, but you also have to buy the interface. So it's more of a uh, push in terms of money, but it's nice. Uh, Vocal Fry is uh, that um, like groggy sound that you get in your voice when you just start to wake up in the morning, like like this, this type of thing. Like finding where that is in your voice and you can use that uh, part of your throat. Uh, yeah, singing, you can use that to scream for a long time without hurting your throat. It's, uh, I don't have too, uh, too much to say about vocal fry because I don't use it all that much in my day to day, but I know that there's a lot of resources online as well as on YouTube for uh, doing a lot better uh, vocal fry. Uh, alternatives to PayPal. Um, PayPal is the one that I normally use. Um, hmm. I know some people accept Venmo. I know some people accept other things. Uh, but PayPal so far has been the one that I've been using. I know that they take a big chunk out of things, and a lot of the things are uh, a bit tough. Uh, some of some things once you start getting a little further into it, just 
direct deposit into your bank, um, which is helpful. Uh, but as for a uh, PayPal alternative, I, I don't think I'd know too much. Uh, Cash App is also something. Uh, but yeah, that's probably about it. Uh, if there's any more questions that you guys have, I think that's all that I've got for the time being. Thank you guys again for stopping in. I really appreciate you guys sitting and listening to me yell for a very long time about uh, resumes and other things. Anytime, anytime. Uh, if any of you guys would uh, ever want to um, ask any more specific questions, uh, feel free to contact me. My email is open. It's on my website. It's on anything, uh, my socials. Uh, if you ever need any help in that regard uh, with more specific stuff, I would be more than happy to lend you a hand. But yeah, thank you guys so much.